Hey guys, welcome back. Joe here again from scalefreak.com coming to bring you the next video in the build series of the Team Associated RC10 F6, the beautiful F1 card, guys. As this build goes together, I love this kit. In this video, so far, well, in this video, I'm actually going to go through a real quickie on how to install the steering bell crank. Now, I'm going to show you because there's a couple ways you can do it. There's actually like three ways you can do it. You can do it where the servo is actually mounted up here and directly linked to the steering, or you can do the one where the servo is mounted back like this, and then you're going to use this uh, this horn, I guess you can call it here. Uh, and then there's a, a third way that you can do it with like the long travel thing. It just servo sits a different whatever. I'm going to show you the kit way, the way that the instructions kind of recommend as the kit way. Later on, I'm sure. Throughout my testing process of this car, I will test with the servo up on the front. A whole bunch of different stuff. Battery in line, because there's a whole bunch of different places to put the battery. But for this one, I'm just going to show you what the general instructions show you how to do. And a couple things I've learned from this so far. So the build of this part is really, really, really easy. You're going to grab this little guy here. And there will be a couple different ones that you can choose from. Uh, there's one that has a much longer ends on it, multiple different holes, depending on what kind of setup that you want to use. Again, I'm just going to use this one as the instructions call it, the kit setup. Um, and of course, you're going to grab a couple of these little silver bad boys here, uh, these ball studs, a little black one right there, and a few screws and bearings. Now, for the steering linkage themselves, so of course, it's going from the sides like that, and then this one is going to go like that. I've gone ahead previously and measured all these out correctly to make sure that everything is done 100%. So bingo, there's take one of the silver ones. There are two millimeter blue spacers or shims you can toss on there. And then these are going to go into the end. One and two. Like so. Now, uh, get these put in there. Now, something to mention while I'm doing this, it does tell you in the instructions, or it shows you in the instructions, you know, this is what it would look like if you did not put the front arms on, or it says, you know, not putting front arms on for clarity, so that you can actually see, if you look, uh, where is it, in the instruction, right, where did it go? I forget exactly where it was, but it actually shows you what it would look like on the kit if you didn't put the top deck on. Oh, sorry, they go upper arms hidden for view clarity. I'm going to tell you right now, this actually would be a lot easier to install these parts if you don't put the upper arms on first. Just kind of saying. Um, also, you'll notice in here that I already put the ball stud and the nut on here. This actually asked you to do that back in the step when you built the servo horn, but I thought it was kind of peculiar that I couldn't actually find that ball stud and that nut. And I was like, oh, am I supposed to have one of these on my own maybe? Uh, no, it turns out that it's actually in a bag for one of the last steps in the book. One of the things I did learn while building this kit is if you ever feel like you're missing a screw, don't worry, it'll be in a bag that it might not look like it's supposed to be in. Some of the instructions on this thing are a little, maybe not exactly clear, but they do their best. Okay, so you've got this, you got these guys set up here. See, just like that, bearing on the top, I always like to put the rubber side out. So boom, slide that sucker in there. Bearing on the bottom, slide that sucker in there. Just like that. Then you've got this. You'll notice the shape of it. See? And that just slides in through the bottom like that. Now, you will put this one screw in the top. This will hold this little bad boy in here. Metal on metal. So here we go, gotcha. Just like that, make sure it still spins real nice because remember this is your steering, so it's gonna be like that. And then of course, we're gonna put our rod ends on. So I will put, see, one side will be a little open than the other. So snap that on here, like that. And then of course, remember when you're putting these on for the steering, always make sure that the little notch mark is in the same direction as the other one. It will make it very handy later if you're ever doing any adjustments on the fly uh, for which which direction you turn that little bad boy in. There we go. And make sure the notch mark is in the same direction. It is. And there we flip it over. Bang, there we go. So that's what it's going to look like. Now this is going to go inside, inside this. 
And and I'll tell you, it, it, I mean, it fits in. Obviously, it fits in, but it would be easier to put this in and make sure you put it down correctly if that top deck is not on, especially since this thing will try to spin while you're doing it. Uh, whereas if the case that if this wasn't on the top, you could grab it with something really, really easily. Uh, but let's uh, let's venture in. So just kind of make sure that when you're putting it in, that you remember that these these links have to go between the arms. So slip it in here, get the link up. And if you want to now, why not? Just make sure they don't get out of the way. Snap them in now, sure. I mean, they're all going in the same spot anyway. One, and this way they don't kind of get away on you. And then get this one in here. See, they, they're all over the place. They move so freely that you're going to wrestle with them for a second. And you can see why, like I'm wrestling with it inside here, you can see why it might have been easier to do without that top deck on. And then uh, snap that sucker on. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got to get, see, it's it's all in there. See it in there? So I know what hole it has to go in. It goes in the, so kind of feels like that one but it's actually that one so the first one behind those two you'll know the difference if you put it too far back it just won't steer it'll catch up on stuff so i will do this this is kind of a wrestling match here too uh we'll line this bad boy up like so and get this in so remember that while you're doing this gonna fight there we go I think get on there just waiting for it to catch the thread and start to suck it down to the chassis but remember that that blue thing will spin as well because it's sitting on two bearings and what do bearings do they spin so even if you can get like a set of where are they set a needle nose in there to maybe assist you in your adventure just to hang on to it maybe again so much easier if the top deck wasn't on there see if I can find extra bits to feed into the top To hold the line a little bit. There we go. So you could feed a screwdriver in the top like that and then start to lock it down. And nice and tight. There we go. So you can see now with your hand, you got your steering. And then, of course, snap this sucker on the steering servo. There we go, and that's set up so that your steering servo will turn your steering like that. Now, one thing I have learned with F1 is don't worry about lock to lock. I mean, you're going to center the servo later, but with F1, you don't even need this much steering. I mean, with when when I was running my other F1 car, I had my dual rate dialed back to maybe like 60%, so I only steered like this much. The car can go like that much but you only need like that much. You don't need as much steering as these cars are actually able to do. So when you're running this thing and you notice that it's really twitchy, dial your steering back. Slow your servo right down and dial your steering back. It will help you turn, which is, I know it sounds a little funny to say that, but with these rubber tires, um, if you have too much steering, the front end, the tires, and then you'll just push forward because the steering is just way beyond its lock. So nice fast servo, a nice center returning servo, uh, but you don't have to worry about having um, the maximum throw. Set your endpoints and then dial your dual right down. So that's how you get those links on. I just wanted to kind of show you that. Of course, you would use your little, where is it, where is it, where is it? Your link tool here to make your adjustments. Because, I mean, even though I've got all the adjustments for everything done here, I may have to make some adjustments like this later just to make sure that everything is centered out correctly. Um, and I've got the right amount of toe on the front. You just kind of want a little, like center them straight and then just add a little bit of toe out. 
just a tiny, tiny bit is all you really need to do. But that's it for this video of just putting the steering, finishing the steering together. Now, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, do that as well, or the whole series. Uh, of course, please click on the like, the subscribe, and share this throughout your friends. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night.